Hey y'all, y'all are still in my kitchen with me. We just moved to the other end of the island today to work just for a little change, huh? <laughs> so I'll put y'all over there and now I'm over here. This is usually where y'all are watching me. <laughs> so um, anyway, y'all just said y'all like to see my kitchen. So I thought, well, we'll just kind of move around in it. Why not? Why not? That's fun, isn't it? Um, something I'm wanting to make, um, I make uh, quite often is fajitas at home. But it smokes my kitchen up greatly, even with my vena hood going on high. And um, I'll do it outside too, but you know it's sometimes raining, sometimes cold, and some of us can't cook outside. We don't have something to cook on outside. So I thought, let's try to make it a one sheet pan meal. And I did a little research this morning um, after my Bible study. I got online and I said, well, let's look up one sheet pan fajitas. And oh my goodness, there's a million of them out there. So I just decided, okay, I just read a few of them and said, okay, let's just do ours today here in the kitchen. But there's a million ways to do them. And you can do steak fajitas. You can do shrimp fajitas. But we're going to do chicken. Chicken is our least expensive meat. And a lot of us just have some chicken, don't we? So I put three um, boneless, skinless chicken breasts in a um, bag, a Ziploc bag, okay? And I used a freezer bag so it would be good and hearty because I'm going to flatten my little chicken breast out some. Um, I'm going to open it up. I want them to cook a little quicker than if they're that big old chicken breast. Y'all know what I mean. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of salt in here. And I do mean just like I'm sprinkling each breast, okay? Like, maybe that's like a half teaspoon, something like that. Just a pinch of salt. And... I just want to make sure they're plenty salty because they're chicken and they can take a good bit of salt. But um, you don't have to because we're also going to sprinkle a half teaspoon. Is it a half teaspoon? Yeah, it's half teaspoon of some fajita seasoning on there for each breast. So it'll be a half on each breast, half teaspoon. And this also has some salt in it, but it's listed way down in the list. And it's only um, 250 milligrams. So... Uh, and with just a half a teaspoon, I thought I'd add just a little sprinkle of salt, but you don't have to if you're needing to stay real low sodium. And I've also seen these seasoning packets with half the sodium in them too, and that would be a real good thing if you if that's what you're needing to do. There's cumin in here, there's chili pepper, oregano, onion, and lime powder. So it's kind of a one-stop little shop for several uh, spices that we'll be needing. So I love to use these little packets and I'm not going to use the whole thing. So I put it in a little Ziploc and it's good for another time. So I'm going to use about a half a teaspoon three times. Oh, I can smell that cumin in there already. It smells so good. So I'm going to put me three half teaspoons or a teaspoon and a half for my three pieces of chicken. Total and so it will get around in there pretty good and marinate my um, chickens. I'm gonna put in some olive oil, y'all. You could just use vegetable oil, corn oil, whatever kind of oil you want to do. Okay, I just have that olive and I love some olive oil. I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, ground fresh pepper in there too. Get my baggie open so I won't be touching inside there with that raw chicken, huh? We gotta be safe around our raw chicken or raw meat, don't we? All right, there we go. Now I'm gonna seal this up and I need to get all the air out because I'm actually gonna pound on these little chicken breasts and try to get them a little thinner for me. Take my glasses off. Take my extra set of eyeballs off. <laughs> I remember the day, y'all, when I first started having to wear glasses I'm just going to kind of move this around and get it all, all distributed out in there. I was in, I was in a, I was shopping in a store and I was trying to read a label, for instance, and I was like, goodness, I can't, I can't see that like I've always have been able to. And I looked at it and I said, oh, they're cutting back. They've cut off a little bit of their lighting because they have, but that wasn't really my problem. <laughs> so I blamed it on that for, I don't know, somewhere around six months and then I worked at our local veterinarian office and my boss, Mary Beth, she had a kitty cat and needed its stitches removed from being spayed. All right, y'all, let's start pounding this. I'm using this pounding. It 
anyway, she, she needed to hold the kitty cat and said, remove these stitches, and I couldn't see them, so she had a pair of glasses. She said, here. <laughs> so I was like, okay, it's time, Amy. But um, if you don't have a meat tenderizer or a pounder, and I want to use that flat side. I don't want to use this little sharp side because it'll pound through my, my Ziploc. If you don't have that, you can use something like this, okay? Just a skillet you can pound on there. See, you can use anything. You don't have to use this. I haven't had this forever myself. I've used all sorts of things. One thing y'all are going to find funny. I'll show you something I've used. Y'all see that? And I just kind of pounded him out just a little flatter. I mean, not a ton, just a little bit. So he'll cook quicker. We need to be quick and easy, don't we? I'm going to do all three. I'm going to show y'all something real quick, though. A lot of y'all don't know what this is. You see this telephone insulator? I used to use this all the time. I tenderize my deer steaks with it. It works good. <laughs> keep some in my kitchen window seal. Uh, John's daddy worked 46 years for Century. Century Telephone, before it was named Century. And uh, consequently, we have lots and lots and lots of those insulators. Um, and now you find them in antique shops. About $5 a piece. And John said he wished he had... $5 a piece for all the ones he would set up and shoot when he was target practicing as a kid. Isn't that something? Isn't that just something sometimes what we take for granted? Because I think they're beautiful. And y'all know I've got turquoise ones, I've got amber ones, I've got clear ones, uh, and I am looking for a purple one. I have seen them online, but I have not found a purple one on this property. Okay, y'all. These are all seasoned. Get rid of my, well, I'll just keep this right here. It's not hurt a thing. I just have that plastic cutting board down there just in case I happen to get a little chicken juice somewhere and I can clean him up and get him off our workspace. But um, I've got this sheet pan here with foil on it so we will have easy cleanup, huh? Yeah. Yes. And you're going to preheat your oven to 375. I'm not going to right now because y'all know it's morning. Y'all know how I do. I get all this ready. Today, I got to go back into the office and do a bunch of office work for for us, A and J dirt work. So, I'm just getting this all ready and going to slide it into the refrigerator. Okay, y'all. Throw this away. And I'm just going to rinse my hands quick, quick, quick. And come back to y'all real fast like, yes, I am. <laughs> Something I was going to put in there was um, diced uh, chipotle peppers because they're smoky and I forgot. Let's do it right now, y'all. Let's do it anyway. We'll just put a little bit on top of each, each breast. But anyway, you're going to heat your oven to 375. This is smoky. Smoked jalapenos and a tomato, vinegar, onion, garlic sauce. Very, very, very good. And I found this jar so I can just use it constantly out of my refrigerator. Um, I'm just going to kind of paint that on there. Give them a little bit of smokiness inside in our oven, huh? Yeah. This will keep my house from getting all smoked up. And I can be doing something else instead of standing there stirring them, huh? So I'm, I'm excited about doing a one-sheet pan fajita. Like I say, you could do fish. You could do shrimp. You could do steak. You could do all of them, but you're just going to have to change your temps. Now, this is 375 for 25 minutes on these chicken breasts, but um, I wouldn't I wouldn't just interchange all that, okay? Something else I'm going to put on this sheet pan. I'm going to move my chicken board, okay? Is, uh, let's see here. I'm going to... I'm going to move these real quick and bring over here what, what else I've got to do. <laughs> Y'all like, oh, Lord, help us, Amy. I know it. Y'all see all these veggies. Um, this particular thing, we're going to make a homemade green salsa with some tomatillas. Y'all see these little tomatillas? 
I'm gonna slice them and put them on that pan with the chicken and some jalapenos I'm gonna slice and put on there and three cloves of garlic. I've still got to uh, peel these little cloves of garlic. And we're also gonna roast half of a lime on there. Mm, it's gonna give it that charred roasted flavor in our, in our green salsa. But if you don't wanna make the green salsa, don't, don't, okay? Um, you can get this jar green salsa right here, okay? Or any kind that you like. Um, but I thought we just would. Uh, why not, huh? We'll just do a little tiny bit of homemade kind of stuff. Um, and I was going to show you what a tomatilla looks like before I've peeled him and washed him to roast. And I'm going to slice him, too. He looks like... He kind of reminds me of a little green tomato, but he is not, okay? And you see how it's got this leaf, this growing all around him like that and it's split open at the bottom okay and you're gonna peel this off here like this and to look for some that are good and fresh make sure that peeling is still tight on there because that means he's the freshest and um then i'm gonna twist that off okay and now this leaves him but he's tacky he's sticky and tacky so i'm gonna go wash him real good okay and I'm gonna do some slicing and some chopping. And that's gonna go on that sheet pan with the chicken for the 25 minutes at 375, okay? And then while those are baking, I can slice me some tomatoes and some, I've got red and green and yellow peppers. I'm gonna slice in those strips, you know, those julienne strips like you get in a fajita. And I'm also gonna um, slice, I'm gonna put half of him in the uh, oven to roast also for our salsa and then half of him I'll chop and put for our uh, fajitas later. So anyway, y'all know what I'm gonna be up to and I might come back on here and just do some chopping videos and then I may not. I may just get all this done and, and kind of show you what it looked like before I put it in the oven. I think we'll do that so we won't just have this long drawn out video. Just be my voice that's long and drawn out. Huh? <laughs> okay, y'all, I'll be back. Okay guys, on to the sheet pan with my chicken breast is gonna be our green salsa makings. Now, if you wanna skip this part and you wanna use that jar of green salsa, that is perfectly fine. So you're just gonna put your chicken breast in there for about 25 minutes on 375, okay? But if you wanna make this green salsa with me, Sauce Fierde, we have, I'm gonna get all this stuff, show you what I just did when I, when I got off of here with y'all, I quartered half of a big, I've got big Texas onions from Christy Her, her little boyfriend, so I'm going to put those on there. I'm just where y'all see that. I quartered one. I saved half of that big old Texas onion. You could use more onions if you want to, to cook for our fajitas with our bell peppers, okay? And then... I de-seeded and semi-de-veined these jalapenos because the seeds in the veins is what has all the hotness in there. So I did it kind of a semi, okay? So they'll be mildly hot, okay? And then I've got three cloves of garlic that I um, peeled. I'm gonna put in here. And then these are those tomatillas. I sliced them, some of them in half and some of them in quarters. I'll show you what one looks like sliced into too. He's really tart, almost kind of citrusy and tart, okay? And um, that's what green sauce is made out of. Yes, it is. I'm going to put those all on here. And this is going, they're going to roast in the oven with the chicken breast at 375 for 25 minutes. I know I keep repeating myself, but I'm just trying to stay focused, stay focused. <laughs> there we go. Half of that lime, I'm gonna put him down there too. And then while I was doing this, I um, chopped me just about a quarter of one of those jalapenos into tiny little dices and just a little piece of that onion because I'm gonna make some, some guacamole here in a minute. <laughs> and I will stay on here with y'all. I sure will. Okay, y'all. Now I'm gonna cover this because like y'all, like I told y'all, I've got office work to do. And so I'm gonna cover it with some plastic and slide it in my refrigerator and do this later in the afternoon for John and me. And all I've really gotta do is cover my chicken. Just my chicken. 
I'm not even gonna worry about covering my veggies. And I probably wouldn't have to cover these. The plastic came flying out of there, y'all. Always when you're on camera, huh? There we go. I'm gonna slide this in the refrigerator and then we'll put together some um, guacamole. <laughs> Make us some guacamole. Let's see, we need us a little bowl, don't we? Oh, just perfect, just perfect. Yes, it will. Right here, right there. And it's just me, because John does not do guacamole. No, he does not. Oh, and I saved a little bit of that jalapeno too. I'm gonna roast with our red bell peppers and stuff too. I kind of get it, did it in big chunks and let that. Um, roast so we can actually sprinkle that in our uh, fajitas as well. Um, I've got me an avocado. You just start cutting halfway into them. You're going to hit this big old seed or pit. So you spin it around on there, cut him in half. Well, come on. There he goes. And there's his seed. You get that out of there. Get it out. Well, none of this is working when I'm trying to show y'all. I do this constantly all the time by myself. All right, mister, you need to behave. He says, no, 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 that's okay. I'm gonna just gouge him and get him out of there. You can't stay. Some people say to stick these uh, pits in your guacamole and it helps it stay green. And I have done that. And honestly, I don't notice a difference. I'll just, be honest with you. So he's going in my garbage bowl. Yes, he is. Okay, y'all. Then I score my avocado. He's really not real, real ripe. That's why he's holding on to that seed. I, I can feel that slicing into him. He's still going to be good, though. And once I scored him, then I'll just scoop him out like this. Like I say, a lot of them still real hard and not real ripe. So I'm gonna just get half of that one. I didn't pick me out a real good avocado in town, did I? No, I did not. I'll just eat whatever. He's not overripe, he's a little underripe. Yeah, he is. Y'all see how I was just scoring on him? And then normally, when he's good and ripe, you scoop it out and you just get it all in chunks like that. I see now why he was hanging on to that seed. He said, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. <laughs> Let me get all what's ripe on you. Kind of the bottom side of him was good and ripe. So that's what we'll do. And this will be plenty for me, since it's just me. And I'm gonna put my onion and my jalapeno in here. I've got that other half of that lime. I'm going to squeeze in here to keep my avocado nice and green. Plus, it gives it a real nice citrus pop. Yes, it does. And a little bit of salt. Just a little pinch of salt. Maybe a little half a pinch. And some pepper. And I like some tomatoes in mine. Some people don't, but I do. I like it. I'm going to quarter me some little grape tomatoes. I just picked out a few that I'm going to roast in the oven. For our fajitas, just like that, and put that in there. I am going to have to hide this for myself the rest of the day because I'm I'm going to be eat, wanting to eat my guacamole. <laughs> it's going to be calling my name. Yes, it is. Y'all see it? How pretty and fresh it's gonna be on my fajitas. Yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna get it covered up and I'm gonna hide it for Mamie. I gotta hide it for Mamie. Y'all ever hide stuff from yourselves? <laughs> Sometimes I say I'm putting it up in a real good spot so I won't lose it and then uh, guess what? I've hidden it from myself. Do y'all do that too? <laughs> oh goodness. When I was younger, I could tell you what I'd done every second of every day and what I'd written and what I'd where I'd put it. And the older you get, that goes, so enjoy it. Enjoy it while you got it, yeah. <laughs> all right, y'all, I'm gonna get off. I gotta go do office work, and then I'll come back on here with y'all 
and I'll show y'all what you do to make the little salsa. Um, what I am going to do, in case you don't want to continue to watch, after I bake those um, chicken breasts for the 25 minutes on 375, I'm going to turn, I'm pull them out and I'm going to get my salsa makings and I'm going to blend it in a blender um, off of the pan. And on that place of the pan where my salsa makings were, I'm going to put the julienne or sliced um, bell peppers and onion and the jalapenos. And then I'm going to just put these little grape tomatoes whole just like that. And I'm going to drizzle them with the olive oil and salt and pepper, okay? And then I'm going to slide them back into the oven. Um, but before that, on my chicken, I'm gonna take some of that green salsa and I'm gonna I'm gonna slice my chicken breast in little thin strips like your fajitas after they're done, pretty pretty done, and then I'm gonna toss them with a little bit of that green salsa and put it back where they were on that sheet with my bell pepper and onion and all that. Slide it back into the oven. Now I have I've turned my oven on up to 500 while I'm doing all that, and it's heating on up really hot. So when you slide it back in there, um, your little strips of chicken sort of gets brown bits and charred bits and then all your bell pepper and onion and stuff gets charred and brown like your fajitas. Um, but you weren't standing there having to stir it and stir it. And I don't know if you've ever made them, but when you get through your pan that you're cooking it in, it has got so much charred and just like baked on stuff that I literally have to soak it. So I'm excited about doing this on a piece of foil and a sheet pan in my oven and not having that cleanup after too. So anyway, just to let you know, that's how that's gonna go. Then you can slide it out. And I'm gonna use this pan that I got like Miss Brenda Gant. And I love it, cause look at there. I've got some fajita sized flour tortillas and I'm gonna cook those on on my stove top while uh, everything's cooking up really, really quick in the oven, and then we'll be able to eat. And if you don't want to do it that way, you could just put you a few in some foil and slide them in the oven. And I may, I may do some of each and let John and I decide which way we like it. Um, but anyway, just let me know how this is gonna finish out. But of course, I'm gonna come back on here and show y'all too. You know, I'll do it with y'all. But I just want to let you know at this point what we're doing. Y'all, I've had many of y'all also ask me what kind of olive oil I use. And I'm not real specific about it, okay? I'm not, I'm not, a, I mean, I love olive oil, but I don't have this oil. I only use this kind. One time I bought this in the store. It's a California olive oil. Then when I go up to the club, you know, the big club that we go, um, shop at and you get lots of discount prices. You see this big old jug and it says it's from produced in Italy, Spain, Greece, and Tunisia and they bottle it and pack it in Italy. So, um, and the only thing I do get is extra virgin olive oil because I love that flavor. But, um, other than that, I just get any, any olive oil really. Okay. So, just to let you know, I don't have a particular brand or anything, and lots of you have asked. Hey guys, I'm about to get all my fajita um, veggies chopped, and I've got one more bell pepper, and I was just gonna show you how I do how I do it. Um, I'll slice the tip off right here, a shallow tip like that, where it shows that in there, okay? I don't throw them away. No, no, no. I will take this little stem off the top, though. I'll do that. I'm chunking stuff in my garbage bowl over here. In case y'all are wondering, I'm not just throwing it in my kitchen floor. Um, and then I'll kind of slice the tip end off there just enough so I can cut me some little strips, julienne strips. And I put that with my lid over there. Then do y'all see how we've got the seeds and the veins holding the seeds in there? Okay, I'll just take my knife with him down here and I'll go along that vein and slice off the whole little inside like that. And that gets your veins. Make sure he's not still attached there. And then I can just pull that whole little piece out like this in one piece. And it's got all my seeds on there too. They're dropping everywhere, but I'm showing you. Okay. And that leaves very little left in there. And then I just tap it over my garbage bowl and it gets the rest of the seeds out of there. And it even cut the veins off pretty good that was holding that seed 
piece in there and so it's ready. And then all I've got to do is slice him in half like that. And I will cut a little bit more of that vein off just just because he's not so pretty. I don't know that he tastes bad or anything or that you'd have to, but that's just what I do. I like my food to look good before you even put it in your mouth, you know. <laughs> but you know what? I bet it tastes good even without doing that. And now I'm just slicing me some little strips like that. But they'll be good, as John says, in our fajitas. John is working today. He will be gone again to close to dark. That's what he does. And I love it because the closer it gets during the winter time, it gets dark faster. <laughs> and he gets back home to the house to me faster. Yes, he does. We can have longer evenings together. But during the summertime and and as the days are longer, he, he'll stay out there and he will work. Yes, he will. He's my hard working young man. Yes, he is. So now all these right here, I can just let them sit here if I wanted to. And my meanwhile, my chicken would have already been cooking in the oven. But y'all know that I got to go into my office for a while. So I'm probably just going to put these in a little bowl in my refrigerator and let them stay good and fresh until I do that. And what I was going to tell y'all I do with my um, bell pepper tops and bottoms like that, since they won't look pretty in my fajitas, I know if I was making gumbo or something, I could go on and chop them up, couldn't I? But I'm just going to put them in here. This is a bag. I've already got celery and green onion pieces and other um, bell pepper tops frozen. And I put all this in my freezer, in a freezer bag. And when I'm making gumbo or any kind of chicken stock for chicken and dressing, whatever you want to make, some kind of a soup, this makes great chicken stock, okay? So this is when I'll pull it out and I'll just load my, my pot up to make my broth and my stock. So that, I was just telling you what I did with my leftovers. Okay, guys. Um, I stayed in my office for a long time. And uh, I've come back out. <laughs> and right before dark, I've come out here and John got home and we went and checked our cows and our calves to make sure everybody was okay. Everybody's wonderful. And I want to tell y'all some good news is um, the mama calf, number 26, Freckles, who had lost her baby to the buzzards the other morning. Well, she is nursing. A couple of them will run up and nurse on her. <laughs> and that just warmed my heart because... At least she's getting to play mama, even though hers didn't make it. So it's a little better, a little better. I want to let y'all know how it was a little better. But anyway, before I went out checking the cows, I got this out of the refrigerator and let it sort of start getting to room temp. And I had my oven preheating to 375. So I'm going to slide all this in there and go about 25, 30 minutes. And then I'll come back and we'll make our salsa, okay? I'll see y'all back in just a little bit. Y'all hear the oven, don't you? It says it's time. It's been 25 minutes. I'm going to go get my chicken and my salsa making stuff out. But before I leave my oven, I'm going to turn my oven up to 500, okay? Because we're going to get back in there. I'll be right back, y'all. Okay, I'm going to hush that thing up and I'm going up to 500. Yeah. Okay. Come here, you pretty things, and let's go show everybody what y'all were looking like. <laughs> Doesn't that thing look good? Y'all see the chicken? It smells like a Mexican restaurant in here, y'all. Oh, it smells so good, and I've been sitting outside watching the sunset, so hey, that's even better. Um, okay, first thing we're going to do, I've got my blender here. Now I'm going to scoop up. Well, that's my little lime. We're not going to scoop him up. I'm going to scoop up my tomatillas. They're all soft and pretty. Smelling. Oh my goodness, it smells wonderful in here. I really do wish we had smell-o-vision because wouldn't that be nice to have an app? And when, when I take this out, y'all can actually smell what I'm cooking. Yes, it would. I, I say things like, well, that's not possible. And then... They come out with something like that, so <laughs> I'm not going to say that's not possible. That's garlic, jalapeno, tomatillas, and half of that big old Texas onion, okay? Now, he is hot, but I want to squeeze that 
roasted lime in our blender. So, open back up, buddy. Try not to burn myself, y'all. Everything's so warm because we just pulled that out of the oven. Oh my goodness, look how easy he, he juiced. Fantastic. Yes, it is. All right, we'll get rid of him. Okay, y'all. Here we are in our blender. I'm gonna make our sauce. Let's see if it blends up. And I'm not gonna talk. I know when I talk. Y'all, something else I've done is I've ordered us a um, microphone that'll actually clip on me. So like if I have the mixture going or this blender going, y'all actually still be able to hear me yakking away. <laughs> Y'all like, I'm not sure that's a good thing, Amy. But anyway, I have. Okay, here we go. That was fast, wasn't it, y'all? Oh my goodness. Look how hot that is coming straight out of the oven. That fast, we just made homemade salsa verde or tomatillo salsa, green salsa. I did not put any um, of my seasoning yet. I'm just going to taste it right now. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Gracious alive. Y'all, I have used the green jarred salsa all the time to do, y'all know that chicken verde. This is out of sight. I will not waste that. Now, it's great, but I'm going to add a little salt and pepper and some dried cilantro right here. I do grow cilantro outside, but it's gotten fall now, and it's it's done. It says, I'm done, mama. So, I'm going to sprinkle it's just a little bit of cilantro, okay? Just a little sprinkling like that. Maybe a teaspoon, half teaspoon, okay, y'all? Just a little sprinkle of salt. Like I say, I've been sitting outside on the porch with y'all and we've been watching the sunset. I wasn't in here having to cook it up, cook it up, cook it up, but the oven's doing that for me. Isn't that fantastic? Salt, pepper, and a little bit of cilantro is all I added, okay? I didn't do much of a pinch of salt at all, so we'll do a little bit more. A good, healthy pinch, okay, of salt. And if you don't need the salt, it's good without it. Okay, y'all. Wonderful. It's hot, isn't it? Um, goodness, goodness, goodness. This smells so good. Let me come show y'all what it looks like coming out of there. Doesn't that look good? And we did that by ourselves, homemade. Is that not fantastic? I mean, that's fantastic. Oh my goodness, that's fantastic. Green salsa, salsa verde. Okay, I'm gonna go on and pour it all here. Some of it we're gonna put on our chicken here in just a minute. Let me, let me get back down to business with us, okay? All right, y'all. Hang on, he's still warm. Let me move my blender out of our way. There we go. Get down there, buddy. We don't need you anymore. You did good. All right. Okay, y'all. I'm going to take off of here. And I've gotten rid of my little tongs. Maybe I can get my chicken on this plastic cutting board. And that's something I didn't say earlier because I'm always using wooden cutting boards for my raw vegetables and such. But on this plastic cutting board, um, that's what I'll cut my meat on because I can actually put him in the dishwater, washer, or hot, hot soapy dishwater. And, but I'll stick him in my dishwasher, okay? Because then I know he's gonna get really, really clean, okay? And I do not put any meat or raw meat cooked, whichever, on a wooden cutting board, okay? Um, I've got one that I put cooked meat on, but that's all. And it actually says cooked meat on there to let you know. That's all you need to put on it. Okay, and y'all see this juice in here? That's not going to help that get charred up anymore. We've, we've gotten all that out. 
and we need it to char now like the fajita is. So I'm gonna pour this off in my sink, okay? I'll be right back. Right back here, just a second. All right, guys, now I'm back. Now I got this cleaned off again. I'm gonna set it to the side just for a minute. And we are going to slice our little chicken breast into little fajita strips. And y'all remember we pounded on them and made them a lot thinner than they come. And now we're gonna do them in little tiny strips like that. Oh my goodness. And I'm not kidding with y'all, it already smells like a Mexican restaurant in here. Yes, it does. I've got my puppy dogs undivided attention down here below me. And they cannot have any of this spicy stuff. No, they can't. Y'all will make it. I said, I don't know, Mama. We don't know. We might not. <laughs> okay, y'all. I'm going to slice it away. I'm slicing fast as I can. Fast as I can because we need to get rolling, don't we? That's my oven. Y'all hear it? It says, I'm 500. Come on, bring it on. We're fixing to bring it on. I can tell these breasts are very, very moist and good. Yes. And now in that 500 degree oven, we're just going to char them up a little bit. Let some get little brown bits on them. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? I know it. I know. So excited. One more and we will get going again. And y'all can tell this is going to be way more than John and I need, but... <laughs> Y'all know me by now, I always cook too much, but we can eat it left over for lunch the next day. Y'all know I go share it with people. Yes, I do. Okay, y'all. Few more cuts. My puppy dogs are literally down here in between my legs. They're so excited. <laughs> They're so silly. They're so silly. Okay, y'all. I've already got me a glass bowl over here, any kind of container you want to use, okay? That's just what I am going to toss these about just a little bit with some of that salsa we made, that green salsa, salsa verde. Oh my goodness, yes. Before we put it back into the oven to char up and get fajita-like, we're going to toss it about. over there to put in my dishwasher with that meat in it, okay? All right, y'all, here's our salsa. Let me put a good, good couple of spoonfuls. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. Goodness gracious, I wish y'all could smell that. Oh, like I say, this chicken is already done. It's still real moist, okay? This is strictly going in that 500 degree oven to get it fajita light, okay? Let's see how I'm just tossing that about. Wonderful! Alright, y'all. Let me make room for my big old pan of coming in. That's a big old pan in it. Here we are. There we go. Okay. Now, we're going to put these back down here. I'm going to slide this this way so y'all can just see better. Y'all can see better. I want y'all right here with me. Yes, I do. Okay, I'm going to kind of lay these out so they'll be in a single, pretty much a single layer and get all charred and fajita-like, fajita-like. That's a word, right? <laughs> okay, guys. There we go. And y'all remember earlier today how we chopped these onions and bell peppers of every color and jalapenos. Yes. I went on and put them in a Ziploc bag and put them in my refrigerator. Oh yeah, the little grape tomatoes. They'll be a nice little, nice little added thing. Okay, now these have not been seasoned whatsoever, okay? Oh my goodness, doesn't that look good already? Yes, it does. What I'm going to do is take a little bit of olive oil and I'm going to drizzle that on there like that. Yeah, yeah. And we are going to 
put some salt. You go up high and you do your salt, then you get it distributed out really evenly, okay? And now, pepper. All right, pepper, get on there. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be good. Yes, it is. And that's it. Okay, our oven, y'all heard, it's 500 now. And, mm, let me see here. I'm not sure how many minutes I'm gonna go I'll tell you what I'll do. When I come back on here, I'll tell you how many minutes I went. How about that? Is that a deal? <laughs> it already looks good, doesn't it, y'all? <laughs> I'll see y'all back here in a few minutes. I'll let y'all know how many minutes when I come back. Okay, y'all, John's come in here with me. I want him to taste the salsa while the tahitas are cooking. It's still warm, baby. And mm. I want you to tell everybody what you think. Oh, I love that. It's good, it's isn't it? It's got a good little bite to it. Yes. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that way better that than is the jar good. stuff? Yes, yes it is. Y'all do need to put this step <coughs> in there, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Y'all saw how easy it was. <laughs> I mean, it really... Okay, guys. Um, you can do your little fajitas a couple of different ways. I just got some of these fajita-sized flour tortillas, okay? They're not the big burrito size. They're a little smaller. You can do them just like you get it in the restaurant where you put your little tortilla down here and then you fold it over, okay? Like that. Y'all know, y'all know in the restaurants, huh? And then I'm gonna do one more. That's one soft one for John and me. And then I'm also gonna get over here. And y'all, you know what I just slid in the oven? I'm gonna slide this right in there beside it, okay, to get a good and warm. I'll be right back. Well, I'll do that in a second. That way I won't take up y'all's time. I'm gonna put this on some my gas burner over there and get it good and hot. And I'm also gonna toast us a couple. So we'll have a couple of them that are toasted and charred and a couple of soft ones. So we can have one of each, a soft fajita and a crunchy fajita. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm gonna show y'all. Went seven minutes on 500. And that's not quite as brown as John and I like it. So, I'm going to change it. I just want to show y'all. Seven minutes on 500. It started roasting these tomatoes really, really good. And it's got the meat. All, you can see everything's hot, but we like a little char on our um, veggies. Baby, would you come grab these little tortilla packets off and put it on our plate, pretty plate? I will. There you go. Thank you, darling. Mm -hmm. So I now I've turned it on broil, okay, and I'll let you know how many minutes it goes. As soon as I find out how many minutes we like it. Hey, y'all. I'm moving y'all around in my kitchen with me, but um, I've got this little Brenda Gant pan back here. <laughs> it's up. Uh, cast iron little flat pan. He's perfect for doing these little fajitas or some tortillas. Just fantastic. And I'm starting to brown and heat these while our stuff is broiling in the oven. I'll turn y'all around. Right there. Y'all see everything? Oh my goodness, I see some tomatoes getting black. A black char on them and that's perfect. Oh, and I see the meat getting just like that. Yeah. They've been going three minutes, and I put them on two more minutes. So I think we're going to do about five minutes on broil, okay? Yes, I do. I'll be back. Okay, y'all. I'm grabbing it out of the oven. Five minutes on broil, okay? Five minutes. Yeah, this. This is it. I want to come show y'all. <laughs> Look. Do you see the charred veggies? Yes, you do. And look what it did to our chicken. Didn't that do good? Oh my goodness, that's going to be delicious. Delicious. Yes, it is. Put it right there. Go get my toasted tortillas too. They look delicious as well. Yes, they do. Here they are, y'all. Don't they look good in that pan? You see that? That looks so good. So very good. 
Yes, it does. John's gonna want him. He's a little toastier. I know, John. I don't know. He's pretty toasty. John might want him, huh? <laughs> no matter. Either one's gonna be fabulous, isn't it? I'm gonna put this hot pan up, y'all, because I can't sit it down here in the back of my stove right now. Okay, guys. This is it. Um, y'all won't. I know y'all like seeing John and uh, seeing us together. Y'all know he's got to bless our supper. So um, I'll come back on here in a little bit. Y'all know where he is. He went up and closed my chicken coop for me. <laughs> hey, guys. As soon as I turned it off, I hear him coming in the back door. So we click back on. We click back on. We ready. We ready. It's ready, baby. Oh, I'll miss you tomorrow, baby. Thank you, darling. <laughs> He's so sweet. He picked my flowers and brought me one. <laughs> That's so sweet of you, baby. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I got our supper ready. Oh, baby, it looks delicious. And you know what we got left to do before we get to eat this? We're going to say a prayer. Baby. That's right. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for the day, for watching over us, keeping us safe. Lord, please just be with all the people in our prayers, in our churches, Lord. Be with our nation. We love you so much, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, let's see, baby. I'm gonna let you fix your plate for everybody. I got you a crunchy one and a soft one. Okay? Yeah. You want them both of them right now? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. See, I did that like they get in the restaurant, huh? <laughs> Oh, yeah, he's nice and soft. And then you got this crispy, crunchy one. Oh, yeah. So you can have one of each. How about that? Mm -hmm. Then you can have more if you want to. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get me some little tongs, too, and go on and be yeah. fixing mine. So everybody won't just be like, really? Really? Okay, I think I need a little tongs. Little tongs. Okay, use these. Get out there. Y'all, I don't know if I need two, but I'm going to try. I'm we'll try. I'm not able to eat two either, but what? I'm going to try. John Murray. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I think try. you might can. Didn't that um, brown that chicken up just right Ooh, for us, baby? It really did, darling. It was just right. That was seven minutes on broil, and I guess you could skip the 500-degree thing that I did because that just didn't do as well as the broil. So, I went on and made all the... The trial and error, huh? Y'all can just do it straight right the first time. This is wonderful. Mm -hmm. This looks like, sure looks like it's going to taste good. Yep. I can't see it not tasting good. Can you, baby? Mm-mm. This is going to be great. We got tomatoes and onions. Great. I should have kind of stirred them around. Jalapenos, did you see those little strips of jalapenos? See those little bitty pieces? That's jalapenos. Oh, yeah. 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 Depends on how spicy you can take it, John Murray. I can take it. You can, I can take, take it. it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. You've always loved it. He always loves it, doesn't he, y'all? <laughs> and y'all know what? I love it because he loves it. Okay, baby. I, I'm going to have the same problem tonight I usually have. What's your problem, baby? My thing ain't going to roll up. Uh oh. Well, it's not, not going to roll up right. Hey. It's all good, and then isn't it? I might it? have to put a little on the side because well, I am a meat eater, you know. Of course. And y'all remember the guacamole we made. John doesn't like any of this guacamole. Well, I miss the yellow ones. They pretty. Well, yeah. I gotta have some of them. Yeah, you gotta have. I got yellow, red, and green bell yeah, peppers. Got to have and some, some of this ones. homemade. Well, we definitely got to have some of that. Homemade salsa. That stuff's awesome. Thank you, baby. You want mm -hmm. me to just dollop it on yours? Yeah, please. Okay. A little cheese. A little cheese, a little yeah. Cheese. Some Oaxaca cheese would be fantastic on here, y'all. The little white Mexican cheese that crumbles. But I don't have any here at the house, and I didn't go to town today, so we're just going to eat this little Mexican blend. Let me show everybody this. But if you're in town or go to town to get it, I'll get you Oaxaca cheese. Ooh, it's fantastic. Something else, well, we too. Might need a little uh... Might be a little dab of that on the side. So. Okay, baby. Get you a little dab. John just says he needs dab. even just more a, sauce. Did I dollop some on your fajitas? You did on that one for sure. Okay, so I did on that one. Too. on the side. <laughs> do a little dip in here in a little while. And then if you want to serve some um, lime wedges on the side to squirt on there. I don't know, John, do you care if I squirt sure. yours a little bit, baby? Sure, squirt it. He let me squirt his too. 
There we go. And that's it, y'all. <laughs> y'all gonna make these for an easy, easy little fajita meal right here at the house. Hey guys, this is the um the charm of a one sheet pan meal is the easy cleanup. <laughs> it's the best part. Um First thing, I am not going to waste this green salsa or salsa verde, okay? I am not. It is so, so flavorful. And y'all know that chicken verde we make in the crock pot? You could use this and do it. Yes, you could. And it's going to take it over the top. It's going to be way better than the jar that we make that chicken verde with, so... I'm just saying, y'all see that? Now I do. I have this to wash, now don't I? Well, okay. <laughs> and then, we've got some leftover. Hunting season starts this weekend of squirrel hunting around here in Louisiana, North Louisiana. And my husband, he has always squirrel hunted opening day, or opening weekend, I should say. And so he plans on it. Yes, he does. And I thought Saturday he could um, come in here and he might heat him up and eat him another fajita. I was hoping this would all go in this container, y'all. I don't believe it will. Let me grab the little container. Just one more. One more. Because I want to show y'all how easy it is to clean up. And you see, like, if you... Or working the next day, you can do this on a weeknight. You could take this for lunch with a tortilla. You could just microwave, and you've got lunch for the next day. So wonderful, and it's very light. We've already eaten, but it's it's very filling, but it just doesn't make you feel ugh. <laughs> I know y'all know what I mean. Okay, y'all. I'm sitting here taking some time, and I don't want to waste waste one little old strip of pepper or nothing, or nothing. No, I don't. Okay, guys, and that's it. We have cleaned up. Y'all see this? All we gotta do is fold our foil up. Voila! We cleaned the kitchen. Isn't that fantastic? That's fantastic. I wanted to show y'all, y'all know John came in from closing the chicken coop and my roses, they're just knockout roses planted at the back door. Um, he brought me that one because <laughs> he's so sweet. He's always picking me flowers. But um, I wanted to show y'all this glass I put it in. His, uh, we live on his papa's place. I've told y'all many times where he grew up and it's a big farm. And his grandmother had a canning kitchen and she had lots of jars in there. And of course, I saved as many as I could get a hold of before he bulldozed it down. But um, do y'all see this little glass jar? It's perfect for a single little flower, isn't it? But John said when he was a kid, and of course, this is going to be in like the 70s. And y'all might help me with this. That's why I'm saying this. This had concentrate, like maybe Hawaiian punts concentrate in it. And then John said sometimes it was a grape flavor because he remembers it mixing up being purple when his mama, or would your grandma mix it up too or just mama? Welch's mom, grandma. Grandma? So he thinks maybe it was Welch's grape and then maybe some sort of Hawaiian punch. And I was wondering if some of y'all might would remember because it's a beautiful little glass. And um, of course I save it for a single flower. But anyway, I'm just showing y'all some of the old stuff we got here on the farm. Y'all have a good night. Y'all, one other thing I was saying, you know, we could make our green chicken with this, but listen, this is salsa. You can eat it with chips, okay? Just as an appetizer, so whatever you want to do. <laughs> Just don't let it go to waste. <laughs> night, night, y'all.